I'm excited for the word this morning. You know, uh, over the last few weeks, the word's been so good. And just, just like those weeks, I'm expecting this morning, I'm expecting that God would speak to you. And uh, we're, we're starting a new series this week. Woohoo! Glory! It's called All In. All In. And you know, the picture that I got in my mind was, have you ever seen those movies where they go to the casino and they push all the chips in? They all in. They all in. So I don't know if you can see the, or you can't see the picture really clearly, but on the picture it says stuff like desires, anxiety, life, money, uh, dreams, family, kids. All of those things are on the little chips. So we're starting a series this week called All In. So I, I really wanted to wanted you to understand that, you know, in God, He doesn't want just some of you. What does He want? All of you. So what is he? How does he want you? All in. Amen? So here's the thing. When I got, let me give you an example. So when I got born again, right? So I'm driving home and I said this. I said, okay, Lord, this was the simplicity of my heart, but this is what I want you to understand is that God doesn't need you to be so, uh, he doesn't need you to know everything because all he's after is your heart, right? And I prayed this simple prayer because when you get born again, you don't know anything. I mean, you can pretend to know stuff, but you just, when you don't know, you don't know. And I prayed this prayer and I said, Lord, if I'm going to do this Christian thing, and I still said this Christian thing. <laughs> now you see, that's not funny to some of you, but to me it was funny even when I prayed it. Lord, if I'm going to do this Christian thing, then you know what? I'm going to give it everything I got. Because you know what? If this thing doesn't work, then I can just go back to doing exactly what I was doing before. It's not difficult. In fact, Years went by and my friends were still doing the same things on the same nights in the same places. So what I'm saying, it's easy to go back. It's waiting right there for you. Open arms. Welcome back. So I prayed this prayer and I said, Lord, if I'm going to do this Christian thing, then I'm going to give it everything out. What was I saying? I said, Lord, I'm all in. I'm all in. And here's the thing. Either God is faithful or he's not. And guess what? Now, now, this is, this is what blows me away. Just your simple yes, just the simple yes that I said to God, now we get to, myself and my wife, we get to pastor this amazing church. From a simple yes, from what, your, from what my friends thought was, ah, it's just a phase. Glory. It's, an ama- it's still going and it's good. So that's really what I want to talk about in, in, in saying that God really wants us all in. So for part one of this, we're going to start part one today. Is that okay? Because we need part one. So today we're going to talk about surrender. Because I realize that we can't talk about being all in without dealing with surrender. So now I know sometimes you hear surrender and there's this negative connotation to it. It's like, oh, what is the Lord wanting me to give now? What does he want me to give up now? But I believe that there's power in surrender. And, and I'm hoping that by the end of this, you would see that how much power there is in surrender. Amen. So God isn't trying to take things away from you. He's literally wanting to get things to you. But here's the thing. God can't get to you if you won't let it go. So, okay, let me give you some basic examples of surrender. How many of you are sitting in a chair right now? So all of you looking at me like, yeah, me. You can answer me. It's okay. I know it's rhetorical, but you surrendered all yourself, all your goodness, you surrendered to that little chair right there. Because you looked at it, you didn't ask the chair for its credentials, you didn't ask for the manufacturing details, you didn't ask for anything, you just looked at it and sat all your beautiful self down and hoped that it was going to hold you up. What did you do? You surrendered yourself to that chair. I know it's simple. What happens when you're in a, with a passenger in a car? I drive most of the time, so I'm not surrendering. But when you're a passenger, you're surrendering to the driver. How many of you passengers asked the driver what, when was the last time they were in an accident or if they were in an accident when you got in the car this morning? No, you just trusted the one that you're surrendering to. How about you go flying? I've never done this. Maybe some of you have. I've never asked the stewardess, listen, how much flight time does this pilot have? Because we're about to be in the middle of nowhere in the air. And this guy, hopefully he's got enough credentials, enough flying experience that we're going to get to the other side. But what am I doing is I come and I just simply, without even thinking about it, surrender to the pilot. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm talking about. 
that that there's so much power in surrender but when we take away the negative side that when I say surrender that I'm trying to take from you you see what even what Daryl was sharing this morning was a form of surrender you were surrendering finances to someone that was capable able and faithful okay that's another message D that's another message let me give you another example I'm just giving you a little bit of examples just to, to, to give you a little bit of context right so again when I got born again the first thing I ever heard the Spirit of God say and this is before I even knew what God sounded like the first thing I heard God say was you can't be unequally yoked I was like what the heck does that mean I don't know when you guys got born again if you knew everything in the Bible but me you can't be unequally yoked I said what is this and plus I kept hearing it everybody I didn't hear a teaching on it or like my pastor said you can't be. And it was nothing like that it was literally God himself speaking to me saying you can't be unequally yoked I thought God was talking about eggs I was like eggs what the heck does this have to do with anything so over the course of a couple of weeks my lights went on and I was like oh God's talking about the relationship that I'm in right now so I was like okay now you must understand let me, <laughs> this is gonna sound harsh I, look this is just I was ignorant this is just the way it went down phone phone my, my ex-girlfriend and but now you must understand I, I cared about this relationship phone my ex-girlfriend some of you know the story that's why you're laughing already and I phoned her and I said listen I'm sorry but the Lord said I can't be an equally yoked <laughs> no 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 I didn't even understand what that meant for weeks imagine someone that doesn't even is not born again that doesn't know Jesus I'm like you know what like God is saying that I can't be an equally yoked so we're gonna have to you know it's not you it's me <laughs> But I literally told her, like, we can't be equally yoked. And I thought, I think she thought I lost my mind. But, you under, but what I did was, I surrendered my relationships to God. So I surrendered that area of my life to God. And I said, Lord, I don't know how to have relationships in the kingdom. I had an idea of how to do it in the world, which was very good. But when I came into the kingdom, I said, Lord, there must be a different way to the way I used to do it. But I'm not smart enough to figure that out. So I'm going to give it to you because I'm just going to believe by faith that you're smart enough. So I said, Lord, okay, I'm going to surrender this to you. So my focus changed. You see, surrender happens in the heart. It's not, it is an action, yes, but surrender takes place in the heart. So I said, Lord, I'm going to give this to you. So what happened was I released it in my heart and my focus then didn't become, hey, I'm, I need to get a girlfriend. I need to get a wife. I need to, no, my focus then just became Jesus. I was like if God never brings this woman or a woman or somebody for me to marry my focus and my pursuit now is him no one else my pursuit became him and then guess what do you want to know what keep going Kim came but here's the thing because my pursuit was him she showed up at my door she showed up at my door now I know you think that I'm making this stuff up but ask her she literally showed up at my door I have never seen her before never spoke to her before she called me she got my number from somewhere because I was this lowly Christian boy just got born again didn't know anything uh, well that was the perception I was like I had to come from somewhere to meet you at my house but anyway she phones she's like hey there's a group of us were you there you were there yes Clint was there we went to uh, Grand West to the coffee shop it's now Burger King that was the that was take number one unofficially I didn't but you see even then even then it was like you know when you look and you're like hmm you know it's good hmm. but 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 you see my pursuit is him now so even though there's a hmm it's I don't know Lord you know <laughs> my focus is here and over the it, it took months before that actually became a thing you see because he had to then change my focus not change my focus but then add that to what I could see because it was like I wasn't pursuing that so he said because you're not pursuing this I'm gonna add this to you Vicky you preaching my message here so here's the thing surrender is the place where faith is evident faith becomes evident where this surrender because the thing is in order for faith to be seen it has to you have to let go so surrender is the place where faith is evident Do you know why because it takes faith to let go of something that you're holding on to tightly <laughs> I know I know 
You know where I learned that from? I learned that from Jesus. How many of you, he's a good example. So I learned this from Jesus. So Jesus said this in Luke 23, 46. He said this, Father, so you, you know who he's giving it to, right? He says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. To me, that's, he was in such a place of total surrender. Why? Jesus is God, will always be God, and will forever be God, right? But he said he took on the form of flesh. He took on the form of a servant. He laid aside his glory and became as a mere man. So he was human in the flesh. I need you to understand that. I know he's God, but I need you to see him in his human form, in his flesh. And now he's up on the cross after enduring all the beating to the point where they, that was like one lash away from beating you to death. Is that right? So here's the deal. He, he didn't die as God. I need to make this clear. He died as a human. He died as a human. He died as the perfect sacrifice. So here's the deal. He's up on the cross and he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Look, look okay, let me, let me put it, let, let me, let me really, I, I want to I wanna paint a better picture as to why that's so significant in terms of surrender. There was, a, there, was a, there was a phrase that he says, and he says, Father, why have you forsaken me? Do you remember that phrase? It's right there. He says, Father, why have you forsaken me? You know why that's so amazing? It's because here's Jesus that's always sensed the presence of God. Was always in the presence of God. He was perfect. He walked, he walked perfect. And now he finds himself in possibly the worst place that he could ever be and he it's like there was a separation he felt you know what it really was i believe that god i don't believe god ever left him because god because the bible says god will never leave or forsake you know what i actually think it was when he took on the sin of the world i believe that he experienced what it would be like when there was a separation when you went down if you weren't going to heaven if you didn't accept him when you were going to hell there would be a separation from his presence and i believe that jesus felt that and i believe that that was a greater pain being disconnected from the presence of god i believe that was a greater pain than all the lashes and that he could take on his flesh even to the point of dying the separation from the father was one of the greatest anguishes he ever felt and now he's in this place and he says father even though i can't sense you right now even though i'm experiencing all this right now into your hands i commit my spirit i'm committing it to the only one who i believe that is capable faithful and able amen <laughs> i want to give you another i want to give you another example and we will come back to that i want to give you another example of <clears throat> of surrender right so like i love my marriage like i do throwing it out there but it's you know how sometimes you deal with insecurities and you deal with like oh you know is my is my husband or my wife like you know the thoughts like i'm telling you if you never experienced this and you just you're going to just get into a relationship you will where you're like oh, are they are they doing something that i'm not supposed to know or they cheat like all these things and man this thing used to like it used to work on my nerves man like for real i'm like you know kim is you know, she's confident, she's bold, she talks to everybody, like she can talk to anybody and everybody, and like people feel, all of these things, and I'm looking there and I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, like, and now these thoughts, which are not my thoughts, I need you to understand that because my thoughts are life and peace. Those are not my thoughts. So these thoughts try to come in, and now I'm trying to deal with this in, the, in myself. I'm trying to deal with this by my own strength. I got to the point where I was like, Lord, I can't do this anymore. I can't fight this battle in the flesh no more. So, there's got to be a way that I can fight this one. So I said, okay, Lord, I learned this from Jesus. So I said, Father, cool. Into your hands, I commit my marriage. What did I say? I said, Lord, I surrender my marriage to you. Because this was, I was totally convinced and forever be convinced. If God can't keep us and God can't keep her, then there's nothing I can do. I can't convince her enough. So guess what? All of a sudden, life and peace came. Now I don't have to. Who's texting you now? What's going on there now? 
I'm like, I'm busy. No, because what he wants to do is get you into a space where you get into worry, anxiety, stress, all of these things to distract you. So I said, hold on, I'm going to surrender this thing to God. So how, about, so how about you do what Jesus did? Father, into your hands I commit my marriage, my children, this church, my business, whatever it is. Father, into your hands I commit, and there you go. It's a blank check. And you know what? He's waiting. So the question I have to do is, what is God asking you to surrender? Because here's the important thing. Make sure who you are surrendering to. Jesus said this, Father, there was a direct link as to, who, unto, uh, as to who he was surrendering it to. Father, into your hands. You don't just surrender it anyway. I don't go and say, Daryl, into your hands, I'm going to commit my, my marriage. No. I'm going to give it to the one that's faithful. So here's the deal. Faith is not a result of effort. It's a consequence of surrender. I'm going to say that again. Faith is not a result of effort. It's a consequence of surrender. It's a letting go. It's a letting go. But here's what I want you to see. uh, Surrender will come with instruction. It will. It will come with instruction. You know, let me give you one. I'm just going to be, I'm being transparent with you. So here's the thing. My instruction or our instruction came because remember I prayed the prayer, Lord, I'm, I'm giving relationships to you and allowing you to bring about your best. Because I gave my best, Kim gave her best, and then he brought about his best. Amen? So, here, here was our instruction. I want you to fast for 21 days. Away from each other. No texting, no talking, no seeing, nothing. Yo, that was harder than not eating food. Because you must understand, you know, when, when, when it's like all you can think about, all you, the only person you want to be with, and like just be around, and God is telling you, I want you to fast. In other words, separate yourself from them for 21 days. My goodness. And seek me. So we said, okay. You know, even when it's hard and you're just so, you just like, okay, Lord. But you don't realize how hard it's going to be until you're about day two. <laughs> Or even day one, you're like, oh, I haven't texted or anything. By the end of the 21 days, I had so much airtime. I had so much. That is before, like, as before I had, like, before you had data and Wi-Fi and all of that stuff, like, in my house at least, I had so much extra SMSs. Because I used to buy SMS bundles. I'm not that old, but it just shows you how quickly phones. So here's the thing. 21 days. So you know, you know how hard that was? And guess what? He made, it do, he made us do that two or three times, man. <laughs> I need you to understand this because he wanted to establish who the main person is in our relationship. He wanted me to understand and us to understand that if we if if we can't get this relationship right, then this relationship is never going to last. Because here's my prayer: I said, Lord, make sure that they love you more than they love me. Because I'm convinced if they can love God more than me, then they will always love me. Because they'll always be in a place to hear. But I surrendered that. So. Three times, guys. That's 63 days. (laughs) That's a long time. I'm glad God God didn't say like all at once. Because then I didn't know if I was in a relationship after that. (laughs) And you know what the the scary part is? Not scary, but because we were so open to do that for him, he could have easily said at any point during those 21-day fasts, this is not the place you need to be. You must understand when you surrender something to God, it may not be the answer you want, but it's going to be the best answer. And praise God, he didn't say that, and I'm happy about that, but I I gained more in those 21 days away than I did with those 21 days with her. You see, because my main pursuit, then it got realigned to just like before when I committed relationships to God, my main focus got realigned to be my main focus always. And that's what I want you to see, that with surrender will come instruction. What is God asking you to surrender? But be open to hear, because he's going to lead and guide you into all truth. We'll get to that. So faith is the ability to let go and trust the one whom you've given it to. That's what faith is. I know it sounds so simple, but that's what faith is. 
Look at this. And now we're coming to your scripture, Vicky. Matthew 6, verse 33. I know we've heard the scripture. Let's all pretend like we've never heard the scripture before. But I want you to see the power of surrender in the scripture. Now this, for some of you that don't know, it's written in red. You know why? Because it's Jesus speaking. And I'm sure that when Jesus says something, we can actually take it to heart like, this must be true. So it says here, but seek, okay, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But seek first, but there is a priority that I want you to set in your heart. But seek, in other words, I have to intentionally go after and look towards something and someone. And it's saying, but seek first the kingdom of God and all, and his righteousness, God's way of doing and being right. And all these things will be added unto you. You see, when what God thinks and wants becomes more important than what we think and want, that equals surrender. Let me say that again. When what God thinks and what God wants becomes more important than what we think and we want, then that equals surrender. Look at your position, but seek first, and then guess what? All these things. What things? You know that stress, that anxiety, that worry, that, that heaviness, that inner turmoil, all of these things that you feel, that you go through, that you endure, that come on you from every direction? You know, all those things? Guess what? When you position yourself to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, He doesn't give you these things. What He gives you is life. He gives you peace. He gives you hope. He strengthens your faith. He gives you joy. He makes your joy overflow and full. It's like what He gives you, it far outweighs what you take upon yourself. Because He doesn't give stress, anxiety, worry, all of those things. He doesn't give those things. So you've got to understand, what do the things that you want to give me, Lord? So am I willing to exchange my anxiety for peace? Lord, I'm going to come and surrender my anxiety to you because I desire that you give me peace. I know it's simple, but it's true. It's true. Position yourself differently, and again, it takes place in your heart. And all these things, you got desires, you got dreams, you got goals, you got careers, you got businesses, you got all these things, right? And guess what? He says, just prioritize me in your heart. And all the things, he's, God's not opposed to things. Do you know that? He's not opposed to you having dreams and visions and, and desires and goals. He's not opposed to those things. But he wants to be the main thing. And all the other things are going to be added to you. Look at this. How many of you know King Solomon? That dude, Solomon, right? Third king of Israel. So you had Saul, then you had David. And so you, we've heard about David, right? You know, David and Goliath, that David, mighty David, giant slayer, king, amazing king. He was a warrior of warriors. He, he was just like, he was amazing in every way. He says he was handsome to look upon, just like that old, you know, handsome to look upon. Just like Angelo, you know, handsome to look upon. Good eyes, you know? <laughs> And here's the thing, look at the, the, I want you to see the magnitude of David's reign. Because here was a shepherd boy, a nobody that got raised up by God himself to rule the nation of Israel, right? And he himself said, hold on, I can't build what I desire for God, but I'm going to give and gave my goodness. That's a whole nother message on its own, but he didn't hold back when it came to giving to the temple of the Lord because he found another cause. So here's my point, is that imagine taking over from David, the one that they said is the man after God's own heart. What must you be to take over from him? Like, like I just think about it to myself. I'm like, you want me to take over from David? All the people love David. They all do. And you want me to take over from him? <laughs> That's why I believe that Solomon positioned himself in surrender and not entitlement. Because he had every right to be entitled to the throne. But he said, hold on, look at it. It says this here, and we'll go through it. He says, I'm like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And David, with all his wisdom, made him king. <laughs> and Solomon said, I'm like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And I'm supposed to lead this great nation that my father led. Like God's chosen people 
you want me to lead? I'm like, a, like I, I don't have, I, you know, when you don't even know how to say, it's just like, Lord, what do I do? I don't have enough wisdom for this. So that's why I believe he positioned himself in surrender and not entitlement. You see, you want to know why? Because when the calling is greater than your ability, then your position of surrender to God becomes your greatest weapon. When the calling of God, when what God has called you to do, whether it's in business, whether it's in family, whether it's in ministry, wherever God has called you to be, when the calling is greater than your ability, then your position of surrender becomes your greatest weapon. Amen. <laughs> you want to know why? I'm glad you guys asked such amazing questions. <laughs> because you know, and they know, that if God doesn't do this thing, you are not getting it done. Because they know, you know, and everybody else and their family members know that if you can't, that unless God does something, you will never be able to succeed. So when the call, when God calls you to wherever that may be, He's calling you to, to, the, to the music industry, film industry, to be a teacher, to be a mom, to be a dad, to be a child, to be a son, a daughter. You think that being a son or a daughter is not a calling? You beat out a whole bunch of other folks. We won't go into that class right now, but, but, but you, you were chosen for a purpose. So you were called. And it says this in Isaiah 61, it says that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed and qualified me. Woo! Hold on, you didn't do that, he did that. The Spirit of the Lord God, he anointed and he qualified you. That, that, that gets me right there. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are the one that anoints and you are the one that qualifies. But all you have to do is say yes to the call, wherever that may be. But then your position becomes, Lord, I'm going to surrender. I'm going to position myself in humility because I understand that that is going to be my greatest weapon, my greatest position from which I can go from. And then you know who gets the glory? The one that it's rightly designed for. And you've got no problem pointing people in that direction. Now, I just want to tell you about what God did. Like when you pray for people and they get healed and they don't know your name, then they go like, I don't know who that person is. I don't know what happened. But all I know is my leg works. Guess who? It's like, I don't know. They, I remember the one name that they kept praying in is Jesus. So I'm guessing Jesus healed me. I, I want you to see this because it's not about you making your name famous. It's about you redirecting people back to him. Amen. Look at this. Solomon positioned himself to seek God first. Because his view was, I'm like a little kid, right? And everything else that he could have asked for, God added. So let's go there. And I want you to see this. Even at the opportunity of asking for anything, he still positioned himself and chose to remain in a place of surrender. 1 Kings 3 verses 4 and 5. It says, The king, which is Solomon, went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices. For that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. FYI, all he had to sacrifice was one. That's all that was required. But because of his heart for God, he just kept going. A thousand have you ever just been around a thousand animals? Have you ever? Have you been around a thousand people? It's a lot. Imagine these big, gufty animals and he sacrificed. Do you know how much money that would be? Do you know how much time that is? Do you know how much effort that requires? Do you know how much that cost him? He's supposed to be ruling the nation. He's supposed to be making important decisions right now. But he's seeking the kingdom first. And say, Lord, I am bringing this to you because I want this to be a sweet smelling savor unto you. I want you to be acknowledged before everything else. And he just kept going and going and going. And he got to a thousand. That blows my mind. A thousand. A thousand. Like sometimes you kind of, your, 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 your matrix kind of glitches when you must give a thousand rand. Imagine a thousand burnt offerings. And then it says this in verse 5. And at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, 
ask for whatever you want me to give you. Wow! You just got a blank check. You just got the God that created heaven and earth, the God that created you, the God that knows your design, knows everything about you, knows about your enemies, all of these things. And he's saying, ask whatever. If God says whatever, he means that there is no limitations. And get this. He chose. And this is the thing. To this day, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose. In other words, he's going to bring you to a place, but you get to choose. God never ever forces you to get saved. He never forces you to live abundantly. He doesn't force you to live the blessed life. He doesn't force you to live in peace, joy, hope. He doesn't force you, but it's available. But it requires you to surrender. And you get to choose. So Solomon, in the midst of that, it's like, just think about it. You king, you know you got enemies out there. You know you need finances to run this kingdom. You, you, got, you got your list. Don't, I know all of you got the list of, Lord, I need this. We need to get this done. We need to do the. We all got that list. Probably plural lists. And yet he positioned himself even at the, with a blank check and he says, okay. He says this, look at here. 1 Kings uh, 3, go to verse 7. It says, Now, O Lord my God. He just got, God just said, ask whatever you want. Now, O Lord my God, you have made me king instead of my father David, but I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. Wow. And I'm here in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous they cannot be counted. Verse 9, look at it. Look at this. I know we all say he asked for wisdom. He did. But look at the way he asked for it. He says, give me an understanding heart. The, the one translation says, give me an understanding mind and a hearing heart. Give me an understanding heart that I may govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? Wow. Talk about not being entitled right now. Talk about realizing how much you need God to do what he's called you to do. And verse 10, and the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. Ask whatever you want. And he prays, give me an understanding heart. But Lord, what about my enemies? What about, you know, I know I got rent to you. What about that? What about, you know, I, I need to pay this and the kids' school fees need to be paid. He, he's saying, ask what you want right now. Let's bring it home. Lord, Lord, you know we've been living in these conditions that we're living in. Lord, we, when are we going to get a house? When are we going to get a car? You know, it's, it's tough traveling every week. Well, how we, what are we going to do? When are we getting a building? When are we, when are we, when are we, when are we? And we have this list. And he had the opportunity to pray for anything and ask for anything. And he said, give me an understanding heart that I may rule your great people, your, your great nation, that I may discern the, the difference between right and wrong. Amazing. And look at this. The Lord is pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom and so God replied. Don't you love it when God speaks back? So God replied. That's a good time to shout right there. And so God replied, verse 11, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or the death of your enemies, verse 12, I will give you what you have asked for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart so as no one else had ever had or ever will have. He became the wisest king. Verse 13. And, woohoo! You just got what you asked for. God's like, okay, okay, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. Here we go again. That, this is now in King. This is first Kings. The scripture we read was in Matthew, which hadn't been written yet. Amazing, isn't it? This is not like, this is under the law. And all. No, 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 no. Look what he's doing. Verse 13, And I will give you what you did ask, what you, what you did not ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're telling me that this was his portion just because he chose to prioritize God in his heart. Just because he positioned himself in surrender and said, Lord, I'm not capable, 
But if you there, if you give me the wisdom, then I know that all the other things that we strive for, that we, that we, that we, we strive towards, all of these things that we want to make happen, that he will add those things to you. Have you ever had things added to you where you didn't even strive or toil for it? I like that place. I like that place. Talk about abundant life. In verse 14, And if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands as your father David did, I will give you long life. So not only did God give him what he asked for, he gave him a whole bunch extra and then said, oh, listen, remember the instruction that I spoke about earlier? Where when you surrender, God's going to give you instruction. If you follow my instructions, I'm then also going to add, you, add long life to you. Thank you, Jesus. Talk about abundant life. Talk about abundant life. So when you're facing some things, when you're facing some things, and we all go through things, things sometimes, right? Or is it just me? Like, like, I'm not declaring that over you. I'm not asking you to confirm by two or three witnesses that you go through some stuff. But if you, in your, you don't have to answer me because you don't have to come into agreement. But we go through some stuff. That's what Tony and Daryl just got up here and said, we had a, a tough week, a tough faith week. And look at them, they're still smiling, still looking good, still, you know, expecting that God is good. So when you find yourself facing these things or going through these things, I want you to hear this. And this is very, very important. Take heed what you listen to. Take heed who you listen to. Take heed, uh, or, or, or let me put it this way, what you look at and what you say. Let me put it again. What you listen to, who you listen to, what you look at and what you say. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. You know, I, I, this is what I really discovered that like when things aren't going the way you wanted to or you feel like you're getting pressed in on every side you know don't have enough money for this or the kids school fees must be paid and it's like it's just like your list can go on and it can come for and it just feels like everything is just like lord when are we going to break out of this thing and it's just like i don't want to live in this but and we can it's like we go through this thing and those are just a few examples those might be some of the struggles i faced maybe not you you guys are amazing but you know what I've learned the importance of? Is guarding my heart. Now, I know that sounds simple and it sounds cliche and it's like, yeah, guard your heart with all diligence. It'll affect everything that you do. Yeah, we know that scripture. Cool, 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 cool. But, but I really want to say, I can tell you the scripture, but I want to tell you how. Do you, do you want to know how? I already told you how. Number one, guard your ears. Guard your ears. These things. These gates. Guard your ears. Guard your eyes. In other words, you can't get, when you're going through some stuff, you don't go talk to everybody. You don't. You, man, I'm telling you, people will offer free advice in a minute. And it's generally not what the Spirit of God is saying. I don't know. Is it just me? They will talk you out of faith in a moment. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, you see, I told you they like that. I told you those people are like that. It's just like, that's why they haven't given you that promotion left because they're like, da, 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 da. But God's the one that promotes and demotes. Like, he's the one that lifts up and puts down. It's like, it's him. So yet you find yourself and you're just like, you know, you, you have also guard your ears. Be careful who you get around. If they, let, me, let me make it very, very simple. If when you speak to them that they do not build you up or build your faith to get through this thing, then stay away. It's going to help you more than you know. Because how many of you have gotten into conversations like that and, leave and feel worse than when you came there? <laughs> Your little mole you now looks like, a, like Mount Everest. You're like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize how deep I was. Like, I'm way over my head right now. Be careful. What? Guard your ears. Guard your eyes. When you're dealing with some stuff, stay off social media. <laughs> I know. Stay off social media. Stay, turn your TV off. Unless you're putting on a teaching or worship or something, turn the news off. Because that thing will contaminate you. You will be worried about uh, Susie over in Russia that her boyfriend is not taking her out on Valentine's Day. And you'll be worried about that? It's like you have enough to deal with on your own. Now you want to get on social media and see everybody and all their problems. And then on the flip side, you're looking at all, everybody that's showing you their highlight reel and be like, yo, why doesn't my life look like this? Stay off social media. I'm not saying stay off permanently, but I'm saying especially when you're going through something. You're guarding your eyes. 
And number three, watch your mouth. What does the Bible say? Death and life is in the power of your tongue. I understand people want to say some stuff. That's why I'm not meeting or getting together with them. But if I can watch what I say, you know what? I've I got symptoms in my body right now, but I am well. I was telling Daryl the other day, when Elijah was, he was, he was going through these things, and man, it's like I felt grieved in my spirit. You know why? Not because of what he was dealing with. It was because everybody would ask, how's Elijah? And you see, they stopped asking me. <laughs> because I was like, no, Elijah's fine. He's fine. I'm not being ignorant to what he's going through or the symptoms on his body. But what I am doing is I am speaking things that be not as though they were. I am actually speaking what reality and truth is. So I'm saying Elijah is fine. Elijah hasn't gotten up all day. He is strong and healthy. So it's like you FaceTime with people. You, you, um, and you know, it's not that people are, are bad or they're trying to speak things over your children or anything. It's just because people don't know. And that's why I say you've got a God sometimes who you speak to and when you speak to them. Because they mean well. Oh, you know, oh, my baby, oh, he's so sick. No, he's healthy. He's strong. He's whole. He, he, he's got so much strength in his body. I, I need to pray for him to go sleep. Like, like you know what I'm saying? i got to watch what I say when things, you know what? I have abundance and no lack. I have abundance and no lack. I can pay this months in advance. I'm, I'm saying things, and it's not that you are trying to be ignorant. It's that you are operating and functioning in your design. Because when God wanted to see something, He said, light be. So guard your ears. Guard your, what's number two? Guard your, and watch your, and as a consequence, your heart will be guarded. So now when I say, guard your heart, you know what the beginning of that scripture says? Above all. Guess what you got to prioritize right now? That's what the scripture says. I'm not making it up. Above all. That, that's a pretty significant deal. Above all, guard your heart with all diligence for it affects everything that you do. It affects it? You're telling me that if I can just protect just this heart of mine, that it can affect every area of my life? Absolutely. Because otherwise, that's not true. And I have come to believe that everything written in here is true. See, you have a flesh, you have a flesh, you have a natural way, you have experiences, we have ways of that. It's like, you said what to me? Excuse me? Okay, okay. Let, me, let me give you the peace of my mind and, and, and you know, I want, let me just react a certain way. But I've come to understand that you need to learn how to stop. There's a way that your flesh wants to react and sometimes it, it's going to cause you telling somebody off, Right? So, this is what the Bible says, and I never ever saw this before, that it, it says is that there's a way that seems right unto a man. Look at it. There's a way that seems right unto a man, or a woman, you included in here too, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We need to learn how to respond by the Spirit of God. Isn't that what he said? This is what Jesus said. When the Spirit of truth has come, He will lead, He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority for whatever he hears from the Father. He's going to speak to you and declare these things that are to come. So he's already, he already knows how to get through some stuff. So let me give you a great example of this. So there, there's these rare occasions. Very, very, very rare occasions. Where Kim and I are not quite on the same page. Or we have some kind of like a disagreement. Very, very rare. Maybe not in your marriage, like in my marriage, it's very, very rare. Jesus' name. <laughs> and all of you said? Amen. I love agreement. So here's the thing. So now this, there's a way that I want to respond. Man, I'm locked and loaded, waiting to shoot off all my bullets. Because you know, you, you know, you know, you have those. But I remember what you did. I remember this, 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 this. I can run you a list as to why I justifiably can talk and say this thing. So the Spirit of God will say Leave it alone. But there's a way that seems right to me right now. And my way is I need to, I want to make my voice heard. And the end thereof can be strife, anger, offense, you name it. There's a way that I want to respond. But within me, 
The Spirit of God is saying, leave it alone. Why? Because he, has, he wants to lead me into all truth. So he says, leave it alone. And me being the fool overrides that because God won't force you. He'll still get you. You still get to choose. And, and, I, and I open my mouth. Then I wonder sometimes why we're fighting afterwards. But he already said, he already gave me a way of escape. And he just said, simply leave it alone. And here's the thing. If we can learn how to respond by the Spirit of God, do you know why I believe that we face some battles that we, that we face right now? It's because we're out of position. Because if we position ourselves right, then, then we'll be in a place where we can hear Him, that, that, we can, um, that we can allow Him to lead us and navigate us through some stuff. There's a way that seems right. There's a way. Look, it says, when the Spirit of truth comes right has he come he's come he will lead you to all truth so i found this very interesting i found this in the uh, uh, that word truth the greek word for truth it means reality he's going to lead you into all reality not doctrine it doesn't say when the spirit of truth comes, he's going to lead you into all doctrine it says he's going to lead you into all truth see and it's the application of truth it's the application of reality that matters and not just superficial knowledge i can say yes they said i must guard my heart the bible says i must guard my heart but i don't know how i don't apply it i don't actually take heed to to actually guarding my heart so all of that is it's now good knowledge and what he's trying to say is here's a reality all you have to do is apply the reality be he doers of the word right the Greek word is reality. So look at this. It says, He will guide you into all, let's change the word, reality. Guess what reality is? You find yourself in this, in this potential argument. Reality is peace. That's reality. But now I get to choose because He said He's going to lead me into peace. And His instruction is, why don't you just go make a cup of coffee rather than apologize? But I wasn't wrong. I'm leading you into all truth. I'm leading you into all reality. You see, because you want to be in peace more than you want to be right. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. This was hard for me when I learned it the first time too. <laughs> so, again, I've got a question for you. What is God asking you to surrender? And I'm going to close with this. What is God asking you to surrender? Your time, your finances, your energy, your desires, the call of God on your life? Yes, that too your heart, your relationships, your kids, your family, whatever. You will never lose what you entrust to God. You will never lose what you entrust to God. You know why this church is amazing? Because we've entrusted it to Him. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Tanya shared the scripture yesterday with us and she didn't know what was on my notes. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Doesn't that sound like seek first the kingdom of God? I know you have plans. I know you have things that you have in motion. But if you can take those things and present it before Him and say, Lord, am I on the right course? And be willing for Him to say, yes, you're on the right course, keep going. Or I want you to change and do it like this. All your ways, acknowledge Him. And he will direct your path. That sounds like he's going to add some stuff. See, the more and more I'm learning about this every day, that my confidence isn't linked to my ability, but it's linked to my reliability. That's where your confidence comes. Your confidence is linked to, not, not your confidence isn't linked to your ability, but it's linked to your reliability. Who are you relying on? Who are you choosing to say, hey, I don't, I'm like a little kid right now. Can you help me? Give me wisdom in this situation. Anoint me for this business. You don't have the qualification. That's okay. That's where favor comes in. That's where the wisdom of God. You think Joseph was qualified to rule the nation? No. Nope. But God gave him wisdom. And to the point where this was a person in jail, this dude was in jail in prison as a slave. And then he says, there's no one wiser than you. Where did he get that from? How could he make a statement about someone that he didn't know like that? Because of the Spirit of God that had anointed and qualified him.
who are you surrendering the choice to? Because you will hear the voice of the one that you surrender to. <laughs> I know it seems hard at the beginning. You know why? Because you're learning to trust the one you're surrendering to. But my goodness, does it get fun? Does it get fun? When you start hearing things, when God starts giving you direction, when God starts speaking some stuff, and all of a sudden what you, what you used to strive and toil through, what used to be so hard before becomes so easy. <laughs> because He will speak. So I really came to encourage you today. That, and I hope that your perspective on what surrender is changed. That God is not trying to take stuff from you. But that He's actually wanting, desirous of, to add to your life in more ways than we can understand. So we don't have to surrender. We get to surrender. Amen? Amen. So Father, we just thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we pray that this word would, uh, this word would take root in our hearts, that we would have the boldness to come before you and surrender whichever area of our lives that you are calling for, that we would be willing and obedient. And I thank you that as we realign our hearts to you, that we would seek first your kingdom. Seek first you. We make your, you our priority in our hearts. And we thank you that all the other things will just be added to us. So we acknowledge you in this place. We acknowledge you in our lives. And we come and we reposition ourselves in humility this morning. We reposition ourselves in surrender and say, have your way, Lord. Have your way in our lives. Lead and guide us into all reality lead and guide us into all reality in jesus name and if you agree say amen